So how much are you guys willing to spend on a gaming mouse in order to get the best? Well, how about $180? Because that's how much this mouse costs. But is it worth it? Let's find out. If you guys are subscribed to Tech Source, that means that you are into tech or gaming. Well, check this out, guys. If you have always wanted to get into the tech or gaming industry, then now's your chance. Full Sail University offers campus and online degree programs that are designed for the world of entertainment, media, arts, and most importantly, technology. All students have hands-on access to technology from day one, which will help you through your courses, whether you want to be developing software, apps for both iOS and Android, or web design. The difference between other traditional schools and Full Sail is that their programs are actually designed specifically to flex as new methods and applications unfold, which in return allows students to remain relevant and informed throughout the entire learning process. So if you guys are interested in getting into the tech industry, make sure to check out Full Sail University by clicking on the link below. Before we take a look at the mouse, let's go ahead and unbox it first. As always, ROG never disappoints when it comes to packaging. Lifting open the box, you will find the quick start guide, and behind that is a message welcoming you to the ROG community. So this is the ROG Spatha Laser Gaming Mouse, which is both wireless and wired. It's also the coolest looking mouse that I've ever seen. It looks like something straight out of a Transformers movie. And finally, below the mouse is a very cool hardcover carrying case that has all of the accessories. On the left side is a Torx wrench needed to swap the switches, and on the right side we have one braided USB cable and charging hub that doubles as a receiver. Below that we have the charging cable for the dock, two ROG logo stickers, the other two arm round switches, and finally the charging dock legs. Unlike most other wireless mouse that come with a tiny USB receiver, this one is actually built inside the charging dock which by the way looks very dope. It has a powerful magnetic base that grabs onto the mouse once you bring it close enough. With that being said, the only downside I see with this is the fact that you need to have this constantly plugged into the PC, otherwise you won't be able to use the mouse wirelessly. This can be slightly annoying if you travel around with a laptop and are forced to carry the charging dock as well. The mouse on the other hand features 12 programmable buttons, swappable arm round switches, an 8200 dpi sensor and RGB lighting which could be controlled with the software but more on that later. Swapping the switches out is super easy, just pop open the rubber grommets, remove the four screws with the provided Torx wrench and pop open the face plate. You can then simply pull out and replace the other arm round switches which provides more of a click resistance and factors a quick sound sample between both of them. Aesthetically, this is one attractive mouse. I'm definitely digging the curves and the matte black finish. Also, the grip material around the mouse has a Mayan inspired theme, which I thought contributed to the overall cool look. The chassis on the other hand is made out of magnesium alloy, which adds a bit of weight to the mouse, which makes it slightly harder when lifting. It definitely doesn't look like Asus cut any corners here. Then again, for a mouse that costs around $180, there sure as hell better not be. Overall, this mouse has a much larger footprint than the Mionix Caster, which is the mouse I'm currently using. So coming from something much smaller and thinner definitely was noticeable, but after a day or two with the Spatha, I got used to the size. I think the easy transition was possible due to me having larger hands. Aside from that, the comfort level was mostly on the positive side. The only complaint I had was that the grip area wasn't large enough and often found my thumb pressing against the side buttons during gaming. I especially noticed it while playing FPS games like Counter-Strike, where quick reflexes are common. Pressing the side button is almost inevitable, especially when lifting the mouse. Luckily, I had nothing programmed for those buttons, otherwise it would have interfered with my gaming. Speaking of the side buttons, all of them were extremely easy to press, except the two middle ones. Sometimes I would accidentally hit the top left button instead, and reaching the rear button required me to raise my hand a bit. In case you guys haven't noticed by now, the mouse is intended for right-handed users unfortunately. However, if you're a palm or claw gripper like me, you would be pleased to find that the Spatha is ideal for both grip types. So how does a $180 mouse aimed at competitive gamers do in gaming? Well, good and bad. To start off, the mouse is so responsive even in wireless mode that I often find myself looking down to make sure it's not connected with a wire. It's that accurate. The Spatha has a 1000Hz polling rate in wireless mode, which, let me remind you by the way, is the same as most other competitive wired gaming mice. But if you plug in the wire, you basically double that so you get 2000 Hz polling rate, which is ridiculously responsive. Now, can I tell the difference between wired and wireless? 
Yes, the difference is minuscule, but it is there. To the casual player, it's impossible to detect, but if you're playing FPS or games that require quick reflexes, then I would recommend plugging in the wire for the most accuracy. With that said, I think the Spatha is not made for competitive gaming. The weight and size of the mouse puts it in a disadvantage, especially if you have tiny hands. You are forced to glide the mouse instead of lifting it, which really limits your ability to make quick jerk movements for fast-paced action. That's a huge disadvantage in competitive RTS and FPS games. As an MMO mouse, however, it's excellent. Having six buttons to choose from for macros really gives this mouse an advantage. And finally, let's take a look at the software. Through the armory, you can change the color of the LEDs to practically anything. You can choose different colors for each of the three sections of the mouse or sync them all together. Additionally, there are different effects that can be selected from color cycling to breathing or even battery mode, which will correspond the color to how much juice is left on the mouse. Speaking of which, the battery life is impressive. It's been five days since I started using the mouse and it's still above 60%. There's also a power saving option which will put the mouse in sleep mode after being idle for a set amount of time for even a better battery life performance. The button tab is where you can set the action of each button. The performance tab is where you can control the DPI setting, polling rate, button response, and an interesting setting called angle snapping. This allows your mouse to draw extremely straight lines depending on what setting you choose. I'm not sure where this would be useful, but I thought it would be an interesting option to share. And finally, the macro tab up there is where you can record and set macros, which you can then pass on to any of the buttons on the mouse. So in conclusion, the ROG Spatha is a well-made, good-looking and premium gaming mouse that offers some really nice features. The RGB lighting, swappable Omron switches and magnetic charging base are all very nice to have. But asking $480 is pretty steep for a gaming mouse that isn't great for fast-paced games, due to the weight and size of course. Now if you're not a competitive gamer, have money to burn and just want a really awesome looking mouse with RGB lighting, then the Spatha has your name written on it. For everyone else, I would suggest taking a look at the ROG Sika or ROG Gladius if you're looking for a smaller and more affordable gaming mouse. But that will do for my review of the ROG Spatha gaming mouse. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like to show your support. And also let me know in the comment section down below if this is something you would drop $180 on. I'm really interested to hear your opinions. Uh, if you guys want to check out this mouse and other uh, Asus mice that I mentioned in the video, I'll drop links to them down below as well. That's basically it. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, I will see you in the next video.